You are born in a graveyard, not a cave, not a hole, a seafloor of corpses. The year is 505 million BC. Everything here wants to eat you, and everything here can. The Cambrian Sea is chaos. You are Atoya, the death worm, a soft tube of flesh with a mouth at one end and hooks at the other. No bones, no eyes, just muscle, hunger, and instinct. You are one of Earth's first killers, and also one of its easiest meals. Before you crawl, you drift. You start as a drifting embryo, a speck of jelly adrift in prehistoric soup. Currents shove you through a haze of plankton, volcanic dust, and the floating dead. Above you, Monsters glide like nightmares with no rules. Anomalocaris, giant shrimp things with eyes the size of grapes and a mouth like a spinning saw blade. Below, trilobites march across the sand like living armor plates. Every ripple is a lottery ticket. You're smaller than the bubbles you exhale, and you have no idea you're supposed to survive. You eat what you can, rot, plankton, other larvae smaller than you. Each bite, a gamble. Nutrition or poison. A storm rolls through. You are thrown like dust. A wave of sediment sweeps you downward. You fall into the darkness that will be your entire world. You land in silt, soft as ash. It smells of sulfur and death. Perfect. You burrow. Your body coils, secreting slime that glues the sand around you. You push and twist until the light fades completely. Now, the sea can see you. You carve a U-shaped tunnel, open at both ends. You anchor your tail in one curve, your mouth at the other. This is home, and trap, and tomb. You wait. Currents whisper through your tunnel. Particles brush your face. A trilobite crawls overhead, legs tapping like distant rain. You feel it through the mud, every step a tremor that echoes down your skin. You aim your mouth toward the vibration. You strike. Your proboscis unfolds from your throat, a muscular spear lined with hooks. It shoots out, grabs soft flesh, drags it back in. Mud explodes. The sea swallows the sound. You eat. You grow. You molt your skin. You build the burrow again and again, each one deeper. You become the hidden hand in the dirt. But the ocean remembers you. You aren't the only worm with teeth. A shadow passes. The water changes pressure. Something large sniffs the entrance of your tunnel. You freeze. It's Anomalocaris, the top predator of this world. Eyes compound and cruel, arms like pincers, mouth like a spinning saw. You taste its movement as it hovers. One flick of its fins could expose you. You stay perfectly still. Its mouth grinds the mud. The current shifts. Gone. You breathe, if worms could breathe. Next time, you won't be lucky. Weeks become months. Your burrow collapses under storms and rebuilds itself in new directions. The ocean floor shake from distant volcanoes. Water chemistry changes. Oxygen fades. Whole valleys of life suffocate. You crawl upward into fresher layers. You survive by inches. Your world has no mercy. Even success means hunger. You eat carcasses that decay as you eat them. You chew through other Atoya when you find them weaker. Cannibalism isn't evil here, it's efficiency. When you aren't hunting, you hide. Your tail spikes hold the mud like anchors. You listen through your skin to the rhythm of things dying above you. Every echo could be food or death. Usually both. Reproduction is chaos. No courtship, no pair bond. You release sperm and eggs into the water, trusting the tide to mix them. Almost none will hatch. The few that do will never meet their parents. The ocean doesn't do family. 
a new storm begins, thicker than the rest. The sea darkens with ash. Volcanic vents boil the shallows, cooking what they touch. Sediment rains down like snow. You can't escape. Your burrow fills. You twist, dig, writhe, but the mud is heavier than your strength. You run out of water to move. You suffocate in silence. Your body flattens. The burrow caves in. The sea forgets. But mud is memory. Fine grains wrap around your corpse, sealing out oxygen. Bacteria die before they can erase you. You sink through time, layer on layer, epoch on epoch, until pressure turns silt to stone and flesh to shadow. You become a fossil. Perfect. Every hook on your proboscis frozen mid-strike, every wrinkle of your body pressed like a thumbprint in eternity. Millions of years vanish. Continents split. Mountains rise. Ice ages grind the sea away. Somewhere in what will be Canada, your tomb lifts into daylight. Humans arrive. Geologists climb the cliffs of the Burgess Shale and find you staring back at them from the rock. A ghost of meat. A stone snapshot of hunger. They name you Atoya Prolifica. They call you prolific because there are thousands of you. They call you the death worm of the Cambrian. They paint you green or purple in documentaries, give you eyes you never had, jaws you never used. They say you were a monster. They forget you were also prey. They say you survived for millions of years. You didn't. You were lucky for minutes. Then you were mud. So why does it suck to be born an Atoya, the death worm of the Cambrian? Because you were born in a graveyard that never stops growing. Because the sea that feeds you also buries you. Because every vibration means both dinner and death. Because your only talent is patience. And patience here is just waiting to die last. You live blind. You die buried. And your only reward for survival is to be dug up half a billion years later and turned into a museum label. You are remembered not for living, but for proving how cruel life has always been. Thank you for watching. If this deep dive into why it sucks to be born in Atoya, the death worm of the Cambrian shook you, hit subscribe, drop a like, and stay tuned for more shocking stories from the creatures that built the world before it ever had mercy.